First story. Immature OP told his infertile older sister that she would be a terrible mother. And no wonder her ex abandoned her after she refused to raise her poor sister's four kids as she expecting one more just because she had money. OP is now having a meltdown after she kicked him out and cut ties with him. I-17 have two sisters, Alice 29 and Miranda 33. I am much closer to Alice than I am to Miranda. Miranda is also not on good terms with our parents. Alice has four kids and is currently expecting child number five, while Miranda can't have children, which her ex divorced her for. Miranda is very successful in life. She has a nice apartment, works a good job, and earns a decent amount of money. Alice, on the other hand, is struggling financially. She had her first child right out of high school and got pregnant with her second child soon after. So she decided to become a psalm to her children, while her boyfriend provided for them. Me and my parents try to help them out as much as possible, be it childcare or money, whatever she needs. I love my nieces and nephews. I take them to the park and play with the older ones. I really enjoy it. Miranda doesn't help out with them. She says it's because she's too busy. Well, she works long hours, but she doesn't have kids, so I don't know what she does on weekends. She also doesn't help out financially, which I find unfair since she makes so much money, and all she does is spend it on herself. Although she does give us very nice gifts for Christmas and birthdays. My parents nag her about it, saying she should give some of her money to Alice monthly, and I agree with that. So, here comes the part where I may have been an arsehole. I was at Miranda's place last week, as she baked muffins and invited me over to eat some and catch up. We got on the topic of Christmas presents, and I told her some of the stuff I wanted. She nodded and said she would give our parents a coupon for a much-needed vacation. Alice some clothes she had mentioned, and also some new boots and jackets for her kids. I was a little stunned she didn't have more for Alice, so I asked. Why do you only give Alice the bare minimum? You can afford to help out more and you refused to out of spite. Miranda looked at me and laughed. She said it wasn't her business to feed six people, and that Alice was old enough to make her choices and live with the consequences. She knew what she was getting herself into, and that she wouldn't pay Alice's way through life, just because she kept having children she couldn't afford. I was stunned at how coldly she reacted. I asked her how she could live her life being so selfish and uncaring, and she got angry and told me, Listen, kid, there are some things you are way too young for to be discussing with me, and this is one of those. Drop the subject or get out. I got really frustrated with her and said something I probably shouldn't have. I told her, no wonder your husband divorced you. Even if you could have children, you would be a terrible mother. Miranda got very quiet and told me to leave and never come back. She has now blocked me on everything. And though I don't agree with her not helping out, I'm starting to feel guilty for what I said. So, Ada? Verdict. Major Arsehole. Update. So, it's been a while, and I know I haven't answered any comments because I was too ashamed, and I still am. When my parents and sister found out what I said to Miranda, they were absolutely furious. Alice shouted at me so long that my ears were ringing. She looked like she was about to rip my head off. You were right. My sisters had a whole life before I came along, and I was too immature to understand the dynamics between them. When I look at my post, I am disgusted by my tone and what I assumed was the truth. Because not only was I an absolute arsy hole, I was also terribly wrong about a lot of things. Alice never asked for money or childcare. My parents did that willingly, and as I was raised alongside them, they felt more like siblings to me, so I didn't mind. My family also never painted Miranda as the big villain. That was all just me. Because she was already grown and out of the house most of the time when I was little, I just didn't have a deeper connection with her. Maybe I was resentful that she was never there. I can't tell. My parents also didn't really pester Miranda into thinking she should give money to Alice. They only asked her to chip in for bigger presents, which she always did. I was so blinded by my love and concern for Alice that I vilified Miranda. I apologized a hundred times to Miranda. I wrote her letters, tried calling, and went to her apartment. But she wouldn't see me or answer my letters, and she is in her right to do so. I hurt her deeply, and she doesn't owe me forgiveness. But the reason I made this update in the first place is some. Hopefully, good news for you. Miranda has since moved away with her ex. I don't have the whole picture, but they are still very much in love. When his family found out Miranda was infertile, they pestered them to no end, and their marriage didn't withstand that. It was really horrible, which I never knew. My parents said Miranda didn't want me to know the truth, but now that they are in another country, I hope they can be happy again. Also, please don't hate on Alice. She is a wonderful person and a very good mother to all of her kids.
Her third pregnancy was twins, which they didn't expect, and her boyfriend had a vasectomy. But they ended up pregnant regardless with baby number five, which has been born in the meantime. Her boyfriend has also gotten a promotion at work, and they can now live more comfortably. I know I am in the wrong, and that I have a lot of growing to do. I deserve everything you said in the comments. Maybe one day I can have a relationship with Miranda again, but on her terms. If you want to know anything else, let me know. I promise to answer as many comments as I can. Relevant comments by OP. Seiko Valentin. I'm so glad you learned this lesson. As a woman with ovaries that are trying to kill me monthly, and no, not in that way. I was so pissed off with you, that when I saw the original, I had to look for an update. I, literally, wanted to say something terrible to you for saying that the value of your sister was her fertility, maternal status, marital status, and her willingness to fill out checks with the subject line, my sister had more accident babies. The way you just went and said, she makes good money. I don't know what she does with her money in her downtime on the weekends. After all, she doesn't have kids. Was just so jarring. It was like you thought people would only need money to provide for their children. And according to you, if they don't have kids, to provide for other people's children. Then you call her terrible in all walks of life when she tells you, it's not her responsibility to provide for others. This was a good lesson learned. But holy crap the consequences. I'm sorry she won't forgive you. But you told her she deserved to be alone, didn't deserve kids, and was generally awful and cheap. I hope she can forgive you one day. But believe me, things will be strained. You'll have to stick it out if she reaches out. I really hope she can forgive you, because if not, this will hurt the both of you for a very long time. OP, I honestly agree with you, and I need to accept the consequences. My sister doesn't owe me forgiveness. Looking at my original post, I feel sick, but keeping it up here will hopefully remind me never to say something like this again. I can't erase the past, but I can hopefully make the right decisions in the future. I do hope I can start over with my sister again one day and learn about her as a person. Thank you for your comment. Delete it. It's super good that you've realized the error of your ways and are changing. Self-improvement is never easy. In regards to Miranda, this isn't going to be easy. But it might be healthy for you to make peace with the idea that Miranda might not ever want to make amends. I had a friend that I hurt. I didn't mean to hurt her, but I did. I tried for a year to get her to talk to me. During that year, Someone told me that every single person has a different final limit. Something that you might be able to get over quickly is their last straw. And eventually I had to respect that I broke my friend's final straw. And there was no point in continuing to reach out. I needed to respect her wishes. There's a possibility that no matter how much you change, even as you become the complete opposite of the version of you who said that, Miranda may have felt her last straw was crossed and never have any desire to let you back in. Therefore, Try to center your progress around becoming better for yourself. Because you can't control what Miranda does or ever make her forgive you. But you can make sure you never hurt anyone else like that again. And every single one of us has that one person in our lives who we hurt. And they don't want us or our apology as a consequence. Sometimes the growth comes from making peace with knowing we're the villain in their story and focusing on making sure we continue to grow and apologize when we get it wrong. You've got this. OP, thank you for sharing your story. And I am really sorry for what happened to you and your friend. But that is actually very good advice. And I will try to remember it. I've realized that I am, as my sister would say, a work in progress. She said that often. And I am just now starting to appreciate what she tried to teach me. Which makes me even more sad. I will keep in mind what you said. Thank you very much. Timely Donkey Sick is 430. I'm sorry. I don't care if I get downvoted for this. But I don't believe any of this. For you to say the cruel things you said. OP, you did not just say those out of the crack of your arse. Those vile and disgusting comments you made would leave me to believe you had some deep resentment towards your sister. I am also happy to say that I hope she does not forgive you. Because if my sibling were to say something like that to me, I would not talk to them ever again. Quite frankly, I'm surprised she didn't slap you with that nasty mouth of yours. OP, you're right. I did resent my sister. And I guess I never really got over that. When I was younger, Miranda was very strict with me. She would make me say please and thank you or eat by myself when I was in elementary school. She got annoyed when I didn't sit at the table and would get mad when I didn't want to eat my food but begged for something else. In retrospect, she was the only one who tried to give me rules and boundaries. I was a rather spoiled child, and I admit that. She doesn't owe me forgiveness, and I don't deserve it for what I said. But I will try to better myself. For me and my future. Thank you for your comment. Second story. 
entitled F. Mill Destroyed O.P.'s Dress Just Eight Hours Before the Wedding. I'm sitting here in my bridal suite, bawling my eyes out right now. My wedding party is doing their best to try and find a replacement dress. But I just needed to write this all out and see what random internet strangers can suggest. To make things easier, I'll call my future mother-in-law Karen, and my fiancé will be Lee. Lee and I have been together for five years and engaged for about 18 months. I met him in my senior year of college or his first year of graduate school. I met his family a year into dating, and they seemed great. Karen was always very friendly to me, and I never had any issues with her. Lee and I even lived with her and his dad during the entire summer two years ago, after our adjustment lease was up, and we were waiting for our house to be finished being built. There were never any arguments, we had our privacy, and we regularly enjoyed family outings together. Lee and I decided to hold our wedding near the town where we met. I have a friend from college who is from here, and her family has a large estate with an old farmhouse that is the perfect location for our wedding. We have been planning for well over a year, and today was supposed to be the best day of our lives. But Karen has ruined it. On Thursday, Karen, Lee's dad, and Lee's siblings and their spouses arrived in town. We had booked a block of rooms at the nicest hotel in town and were under the impression that everyone had made reservations. It turns out that Karen and Lee's dad expected to stay on the estate. I don't see how this happened, since when we reserved the estate and secured the block of rooms, I provided hotel information to everyone Karen, Lee's dad, siblings, and spouses at family dinner. Karen asked if she and Lee's dad would be staying at the estate, and I told her that the estate only had one house, and we would be using it to get ready to stay on Thursday and Sunday. Anyway, when they got here Thursday and didn't have a room, we scrambled and decided to give them the house Thursday night, while Lee and I ended up crashing with my friend whose family owns the estate. No big deal, except Karen refused to get a hotel room yesterday morning because the hotel where we blocked rooms was sold out. Lee gently told her that she and his dad cannot stay at the house again because last night my wedding party stayed here and we were getting ready this morning and we didn't need to worry about Karen and his dad, but he didn't tell her this. So Karen started crying, and I told her I would find another place for them to stay where there would be other guests. We found another room for them at the second nicest hotel in town, got them a larger corner room, and even covered the costs for last night and tonight. Last night, my four best friends arrived, and after the rehearsal and dinner, we piled up on the couches, watched movies, ate popcorn, and enjoyed a few cocktails at the estate house. At 8.30 this morning, I was woken up by my mother, who had tears in her eyes. I thought something had happened to my grandfather since he's recently been diagnosed with cancer and isn't expected to live out the rest of the year. Instead, she told me that, somehow, my wedding dress had been destroyed and there was no way to salvage it. My dress was literally cut into strips. My veil had been ripped to shreds. There's nothing salvageable. I put the dress bag in the master bedroom closet when Lee and I arrived on Wednesday evening. I showed it to Lee's sister, sister-in-law, and Karen when they arrived Thursday night. I hadn't looked at it again since. The only people that had access were Karen, Lee's dad, Lee, my bridesmaids, and my mother. My bridesmaids never went into my room last night, and my mother would have no reason to do such a thing, so it had to be Karen or her husband. I called Lee, crying, and all I could manage to say was, Your mother ruined my dress, before handing my phone to my mom to explain. Lee was furious. He called Karen, and she hung up on him when he asked her if she cut up my dress. Then he called his sister and she told Lee he was being ridiculous, saying Karen would never do such a thing. But when he asked her who could have done it, his sister was at a loss for suspects. My mother, grandmother, and two of my bridesmaids have gone into town to try and find a dress. Fortunately, my aunt is a seamstress, and should be able to make some last-minute alterations if they find a dress. I keep trying to stay positive, but my beautiful dress, the one I imagined marrying the love of my life in, is gone. And Karen, oh my god, Karen. I don't want to look at her ever again, much less have her be a part of my wedding. I can't bring myself to tell Lee how I feel. And he hadn't asked probably because he knows what I'm going to say. I just… I know that what matters is that today, I'm going to marry my best friend dress or not. I would marry him in a bathrobe. But I don't know how to focus on the happiness of the day with Karen there. TLDR. My future mother-in-law, never any signs of bad feelings between us cut my wedding dress into pieces. And it's ruined completely. I'm trying to focus on the happiness of the day, but I can't help but feel extremely hateful towards her. I'm trying to salvage the day, but I don't know if I should allow her there or not. I don't know how to handle that conversation with my fiancé. Update. 
I originally posted this to relationships, but it was deleted for some reason. But I was told by several people to come here and share. To share the full story my husband and I met at university five years ago. His mother was wonderful to me, respectful, and understood boundaries. We got engaged a year and a half ago. We decided to have a kind of destination wedding where we went to college. It's a kind of small town, but my friend from university has a large estate there with orchards and houses. We decided to marry there. So my husband and I arrived Wednesday night to stay at a house on the estate. I put my dress bag in the master bedroom closet. Thursday evening, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, husband's siblings, and their significant others arrived in town and came out to see us at the estate house. I showed my mother-in-law and my sisters-in-law my dress. The mother-in-law and father-in-law thought they were staying at the estate. Not with us, but at another house on the property. This was the first time anything like this happened. And even though I thought I had made it clear, they needed to secure their own lodging. I figured it was an innocent mistake. See, when we got the estate, we contacted the nicest hotel in town to get a block of rooms. We told everyone at the same time during a family meal. I provided contact information for the hotel, and my mother-in-law asked me about everyone staying at the estate. I told her that space was limited on the estate and left it at that. I realized that I should have specifically told her that she needed to get a room in town. But she also knew that my bridal party was staying with me Friday night so we could get ready there Saturday morning. So when they arrived Thursday, my husband's siblings and spouses had booked hotel rooms, and my mother-in-law and father-in-law thought they were staying on the estate. My husband explained that wasn't the case. They were shocked. So we decided to give them the house for the night and crashed with my friend, whose family owns the estate. We did this because the hotel was fully booked, and as late as it was, we just wanted to take the easy way out. Well, on Thursday, her mother-in-law refused to go to a hotel because she didn't want to be somewhere without other guests. We ended up finding them a bigger, corner room at the second nicest hotel in town, where there were other guests staying, and we paid for it. I thought everything was fine. Friday we had the rehearsal, and after the girls and I hung out, had a few drinks, and watched movies. Yesterday morning, my mother woke me up at 8.30 and was in tears. She has gone to get my dress to let it air out, and it has been cut into strips. It was cut in four sections, from top to bottom, and my veil had been ripped nearly in half. The only people who could have done this were my husband, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, or my bridal party. So I called my husband, and all I could say was, your mother cut up my dress, before handing the phone off to my mom. Fortunately, I composed myself enough to talk to him a bit, and allow a few people to go into town to try and find a replacement dress. I tried really hard to keep positive. My husband called his mother, and asked why she ruined my dress. She hung up on him. Then he called his sister, and told her what happened. She swore her mother couldn't have done that. But when asked by my husband, she couldn't suggest another culprit. They decided to confront their mother together. Since a lot of people had a problem with it in my original post, I told my husband not to come to the estate house. We had planned a special first look, and I didn't want to let my mother-in-law ruin that as well. So the outcome of all of this is that my husband told his mother she was not allowed at the wedding. She proceeded to lose her mind. Apparently. This was alarming for the family since this was entirely out of character for her. However, no one tried to force my husband to change his mind, which made me feel better about continuing with the wedding. Just in case, we asked a few trusted friends to keep an eye out for her and her father-in-law during our celebration, but they didn't attempt to come. The father-in-law also said that they would pay for the ruined dress and the replacement dress purchased yesterday. There were plenty of people asking where my mother-in-law and father-in-law were but my husband and his siblings handled it by saying she wasn't feeling like herself, and that sufficed. This morning, our father-in-law called, congratulated us, and apologized for our mother-in-law's actions. She's wanting to apologize, but I've refused to speak to her. I need to calm down and just relax. My husband and I are at the airport waiting for our flight to go on our honeymoon, so I hope the next week is enough time to get myself together. Update. So many of you have reached out to me, and I couldn't begin to respond to all of the comments. But please know that I have read every single one I received, and that I appreciate all of the kind words and congratulations. This will be another post I cannot reply to, as I am hopefully minutes away from boarding a cruise ship. Some of you suggested a doctor's exam for my mother-in-law. It's not needed. We found out this morning that she has a brain tumor. She and her father-in-law were keeping it from the family so as not to take away from our celebration. They were going to tell us and the rest of the family when we got back from our honeymoon.
This is why his father-in-law was so quick to apologize and offer to cover costs. While he wasn't aware of what had happened, he knew his mother-in-law was displaying some odd behavior in the last week. Without giving out too much information, my mother-in-law most likely cut my dress because she thought she was working on it. Given the way it was cut, this makes sense. I still have not spoken to her, but she did send me a lengthy email apologizing for her actions, admitting she did this despite not fully remembering, and telling me she understands if I never speak to her again. She did not ask me to forgive and forget, or to apologize for how I feel, and not what she did. I never in a million years would have thought she could have done this, but the process of elimination ended with only her. Also, to better explain a few things about her, and her father-in-law staying Wednesday night. My mother-in-law did not show up that evening. She seemed completely confused and thought they were staying at one of the houses on the estate. Knowing about the tumor now, this explains her confusion that night and her strange behavior and attitude Thursday and Saturday mornings. My husband and I decided to go ahead with our plans at both my mother-in-law's and my father-in-law's request. Both my husband and I wanted to go back home immediately. But my father-in-law said there's nothing we can do about the situation so we should just try to enjoy ourselves and worry about the rest when we return. I feel terrible about this, and I seriously hope she'll make a full recovery. Also, for those who felt I should be out for blood, I won't lie. I wanted her dead at several points on Saturday morning. But she was absolutely wonderful to me the entire time I've known her. We even lived with her and her father-in-law for an entire summer, while our house was being finished, and she never once crossed a boundary or was anything but kind and loving. But I do want to make it clear that if she wasn't going through this medical issue, I would never have seen her again. Nor would she ever see any children we might have. Oh, another common question was why her father-in-law stayed with her and missed the wedding. At the time, he told my husband he felt mother-in-law needed to be watched, and my husband thought he meant mother-in-law might act out again. We now know the father-in-law was worried the mother-in-law might have another episode and could get hurt or hurt someone else. Again, I thank you all for reaching out. Edit. Update. That was my mill. I deleted the posts because someone found me, and I was concerned that more people would recognize the situation. Though there was not any ill intent by the person who found me, I felt it was important to respect my mill, given that her actions were not malicious. DH and I are coming up on a year of marriage. I have no more bad thoughts about my wedding day, which I am thankful for. We are just now in the process of moving Phil into a retirement community closer to us. He tried to stay in the family's house after Mill passed, but it was too painful. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.